Today I'm going to talk about bridge design, and I'm going to talk about my paper bridge I built a few years ago. Now because it's paper, we had to build straight members, we couldn't really build an arch, so we went with this truss bridge design, and a lot of people go with it. Um, the reason it failed was because if you think about it in 3D, you're going to have other members on the side. And what happened was, each member wasn't exactly the same height. Even though we cut these members with a miter saw, it was just off a little bit that there was torsion. And what happened was the bridge twisted and it failed. Um, I guess you really can't think of it as a bridge though because all the weight was just on this one point right here. So the points right here didn't really matter so much. Um, if you really want to build a good bridge, you always want these tension wires to be perpendicular with the ground. Um, let me show you why. Alright, so another bridge design we could have went with was this sort of triangle. why this would have been good was that this tension wire would have been perpendicular with the ground. And if you think about holding a bucket of water, it's always easier to let the bucket rest perpendicular with your arm perpendicular to the ground rather than parallel. Um, it causes less strain on the joint up here. And basically, if you only have one certain point that you actually need to hold up, any bridge that you design should have this sort of pattern. If you have an arch and any point you'd want having to go back to that point of, in the middle to carry the weight and to redistribute it back to the ground. But this is just because this isn't really a bridge you don't have weight right there, it's only this portion. And any bridge design that's going to win is going to be based off something like that.